and ITV have confirmed Holly Willoughby will return to present this morning on Monday. Now, she's going to sit alongside fellow presenter Josie Gibson. And speaking out for the first time since leaving the channel, Philip Schofield says that he believes his television career is over. You're not wrong. And in interviews with both the BBC and The Sun, he said he, he feels like a victim of hate and claims he's lost everything. We were mates. Um, you know, we got around the studios, you hang out together, you know, you chat to each other, that sort of stuff. And then... In my dressing room one day, something happened, which, you know, obviously I will regret forever for him and for me, mostly him. That happened maybe four or five times over the next few months, and I know it's unforgivable. Um, but we weren't boyfriends, we weren't in a relationship. I was really in a mess with my own sexuality at the time. And it just happened. We can speak now to journalists from the Mail on Sunday, Charlotte Griffiths. Uh, Charlotte, thank you so much for joining me. So... Philip Schofield has finally spoken. What was your take on, on what was said? And did anything sort of spring to mind when you were listening to what he was saying? Gosh, well, the first thing I thought was um, after Prince Andrew's TV interview, I actually thought the televised mere culpa era was sort of over. And I was, you know, I was thinking, God, Philip, you shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done this. Um, and I still slightly think he shouldn't have done it, to be honest, um, because a lot of what he was saying that was believable was that he really wants this to stop. And yet doing the televised interview mm. is only going to, you know, perpetuate this for another God knows how long. Uh, so I, my overall impression was somebody who genuinely was pleading for his own sanity. I believe that. I thought some of it was quite hammy. I thought overall it was an ill-advised decision. If he really wants the noise to stop, I'm not sure he should have done not one but two filmed interviews. Mm. Well, because he obviously he brought up Caroline Flack and obviously mm, that was mm. a terrible thing. Um, people argue that the press kind of contributed to the actions that she took. Obviously, nobody can prove that and that is not something that you can say was exactly the case. But he referenced that. Um, do we need to be careful, you know, in, in, in the way we cover this? What, what's your thoughts? I think I think he was right to bring up Caroline Flack. And I think that ITV have, you know, had a few suicides on their hands over the years. And, and he was right to reference that. And I think that his bosses at ITV have remained silent. And, you know, after this televised interview, it probably is time for somebody, Martin Frisell or someone high up to speak out because he is a man on the edge. And, you know, we should tread carefully around him now because as he was on his vape, you know, I did think, God, he is on the edge. I mean, he's vaping on, on, you know, whilst being filmed. And he's a very professional man, you know, affairs aside. You know, he knows not to vape on television or whilst being filmed. So that shows he must have been under extreme stress, I think. Um, and so I, I think we should tread carefully with Phil. I think that ITV have a duty of care to Phil, as well as the young lad, as well as all the staff there who mm. claimed that there was a toxic environment. But he could, he could be a victim of this. Somebody senior at ITV should probably speak out. Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously you need to tread carefully. You don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. Um, but for me, watching it, I did get a sense of... It did feel a little, little bit hammy in places. And if he's... And obviously you've got to tread carefully for anyone's mental health in any situation. But then I, it brings me back to people like... Think of Boris Johnson, the way he was treated. He was hounded repeatedly and repeatedly. And I have no idea how Boris managed to handle that. Um, and Philip Schofield, this is absolutely of his own making, all of it, you know. Um, and I did notice listening to that, there was a lot of I, I, I in that. So it was all, mm. there's a lot about I. And I'm more concerned about the young man that is, who is obviously nameless at the moment. A lot of people know he is. I'm more concerned for his mental health. That, that's somebody who I'd be worried about. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, he's obviously much younger. That's what this whole thing is about. And he has his whereabouts have been identified uh, on social media. I think to be fair to Phil, he did seem like he was genuinely trying to protect that boy from being identified outside of social media. I totally agree with you. There was a lot of I, I, I. Mm. And then he corrected himself at one point when he said for him or for me, mostly for him. And I did think, oh, God, that was a couple of seconds where he quickly did a, a yeah. sort of add the comment thing to make himself mm. sound slightly less self-centered there. Mm. Um, so I did, but, what, but while I do think he's trying to protect that man's identity, I think Phil desperately doesn't want that man to speak out. No. Uh, so, I, I, and not just to protect him, that, you know, of course it would be really damaging for Phil if that young man speaks out. Um, so, but I, I agree with you, it was, it was quite hammy in some places as well. It's a, it's a tricky one because you never want to say, look, this guy's lying. He's making it all up. He's dramatizing it too much um, because, you know, if he's mm. having mental health troubles, then we well, should take that seriously. But, but, but again, it um, was all of his own. But then own again, making, he did repeat I, himself. It, there were a few lines that he maybe had rehearsed, I think. And given what Eamon Holmes said on GB News yeah. about how he rehearses these things, I noticed that Sky and The Sun had a couple of the same, you know, sound bites. Ah. So, oh, it's, well, listen, it's I've got to ask you very briefly. Probably not my place to call it. Well, what do you think now in regards to Holly? Should she be coming back? She's coming back on Monday. She said she didn't know anything. His, his wife didn't know anything. But Holly was in all of that environment with him all the time. What do you think? What's your thoughts? Should she yeah, come I'm back? I'm starting to worry that maybe the media... <laughs> you know, accuses the woman in these situations uh, just as much as the man. And maybe there is a little bit of sexism there. I mean, she is actually innocent of all this. She deserves a chance to come back on Monday and fight for her role at ITV, I think. Uh, I'm very surprised it's Josie, actually, because there's been so much speculation that it's going to be Alison Hammond by her side. Um, but she deserves the chance to come back and give it a go. I was also quite surprised to see her smiling and looking very happy on the beach, presumably knowing that there was a camera around the corner. I mean, not far away from the looks of the camera angles. So I, I, if I was her media advisor, I wouldn't be advising her to smile and look jolly and have, you know, in front of cameras. But I would be advising her to give, give her career one last shot. because She isn't actually guilty of anything except maybe knowing something. But we've got no proof of that yet. Mm, well, we'll find out whether she did or she didn't. Listen, Charlotte, it's really good to talk to you.